Good morning guys, welcome back to the channel. This weekend we are in deepest, darkest Cornwall. I'm with Shane and we're diving the British Spearfishing Nationals which involves two days, two competitions, six hours each, swim off only, only mode of transport, feed or flippers. It's a pretty tough physical game. So this weekend I'm gonna break down exactly what we did during the day. At the end of the day, I'm gonna go over what I did wrong, what I could have done better, maybe a little bit of comp prep, but to be honest, my biggest competition preparation is this. Coffee. The location for day one was a place called Talland Bay. It's located on Cornwall's south coast. I had never dived the area before, nor had a chance to scout it, so I was swimming pretty much blind. We have arrived at Talland. It's actually a massive turnout here. There's probably like 30, 40 divers. Nervous, mate? Oh, nah, mate. I'm, I'm good to go. I love rough, dirty weather. It is looking pretty crap out there, but I'm gonna stick to my game plan of running two kilometers to get to my spot and hopefully beat everyone else there. My plan is to run along this path here to this headland and then dive around here. We'll see how that goes today. It's about a two kilometer run. Uh, the valve in me floats. Parked it. Doesn't want to hold air. Competition preparation 101, mate. I should have brought two, but oh well. Luckily, Dan sorted me out. My, I'll make my Scorpina float. Lucky float. Winning float. This is going to win me the day. Here's my float set up for today. I was going to run an extra gun on it, but the viz is bad, so I don't think so. Got water bottle. Stringer. That's really messed up. Yeah, stringer there. Whistle for safety. Float number. Flag. Right, guys. The competition started with the usual safety brief and any specific rules to the day. Fish as per national rules, two rats at 40. So whether you catch a legal bass or a 10 pound bass, it's, it's, it's worth the same point. Uh, and above all that, stay safe and enjoy. You gonna come on the walk with me, mate? Nah, mate, I've got my own plan. He's got his own plan. We'll see who, who comes up. We'll discuss later tonight. If I had actually known what this walk involved, there is no way I would have attempted it. I didn't anticipate it being quite so hilly. Legs are already burning. This could be a mistake, but no one else has gone this far, so hopefully I've got the whole place to fish myself. But I just gotta find an entry point now, which is kind of what I'm scared of. Otherwise I'll be climbing some cliffs with this flow rope. Definitely underestimated how long this walk was and the getting in factor. So I'm gonna try and get down here somehow. I just gotta get in. I'm burning up. Hope this pays off. I got in. Uh, when I hit the water, I'm sure that there was steam coming off my head because I was just burning up in that seven mil wetsuit. Luckily for me, I ran into a school of bass in the shallows. All bass were worth the same points in this competition, so it was great to tick it off the list. Ah, just lost a mackerel. Pretty hard fish to get. But I saw pollock as well. Mackerel's a bit more rare, so that's why I went for that. Hopefully the pollock have stuck around a little bit. We'll see. I finally found some decent sized pollock. And missed. I only managed to get one pollock out of the area before moving onto the sand line looking for flatfish. I didn't see any flatfish either. Three and a half hours in, and finally just sort of started to get into my groove in the, maybe the last hour, getting some decent dives in, finally relaxing after that hike this morning. That was pretty silly. I don't think that was a good idea. Drifting maybe a kilometer away from where I started, where I shot the bass and the pollock, but I haven't really seen any decent pollock since. So I think I'm gonna have to try into the shallows. I'm out a bit wider here at the moment. But I'm just not finding any fish. Wind's picked up a bit here, so it's a bit choppy, but stay hydrated. Crack on, two and a half hours to go. After a lot of up and down, I finally found some decent country in 10 to 12 meters. A few Pollock made the stringer as well.
After diving on this spot for a while, I had a Rass, three Pollock and a Bass on my stringer, but I was way too tired to continue fishing. I had to make my way back in. I'm beyond spent. I got no words. I'm absolutely smashed. Definitely glad I stopped diving when I did. It was clear that I didn't find the fish that everybody else did. Graham Worley had a beautiful string of fish, so did Joe Janik, and Dan Bailey had this beautiful place as well. Kev Daly top scored for the day and I ended up in sixth position. Where to start with today's dive? I think my biggest mistake was my run at the start of the day. It wasn't really a run, it was kind of a walk, but it was over two kilometers and I wasn't sure that it was an entry spot. I think I underestimated how taxing that would be on my body because I was carrying a weight vest, a weight belt, all my gear, an extra maybe 10, 12 kilos of gear, plus the seven mil wetsuit. When you're walking for that long, it takes its toll on its body. My legs were really, really tired by the start of the competition, which is not ideal because you want to be diving and swimming, obviously. So I think that was my biggest mistake. So tomorrow, I don't think I'm going to be going for any long walks at the start of the day. I'll probably just jump in and spend more time looking for fish. So once I finally found this other spot at about three and a half hours in, two and a half hours left, I was maybe a kilometer and a half, two kilometers away from the finish line. I was getting pretty fatigued by then. I had a cramp in my leg, so I made sure I kept the hydration up and I dived on this spot, shot the Rass, then I shot a Pollock the next dive afterwards. I looked at my watch, saw that I had an hour and 20 minutes to get back. I really wanted to dive this spot some more because it was, it was really fishy. On the surface, there was bait and I saw bass coming up off the bottom in 10 meters coming and eating this bait. So I knew it would be a fishy area, but I just knew that my body was pretty much done and I needed time to get back. And it was a long slog back in. I got back in with 20 minutes to spare, but I was just physically exhausted. So the area tomorrow doesn't involve quite as much swimming. So I'm planning on just spending more time in the shallows looking for species like mullet as well because I didn't see, I saw one of those today but only got a small glimpse of it and yeah just try and expend less energy on the swim and the run at the start focus more on the diving but overall yeah can't complain too much about today's dive good fun spanked gonna go to the pub now feeling yesterday a lot right now legs are sore body sore quite stiff Shane's pretty much the same and today there's one area that we want to get to that's a 1.8 kilometer walk which is pretty similar to what i did yesterday and the fishing ground off there looks amazing but i just i'm gonna to have to make that call and i don't think i'll be able to make it out there to fish out there i just don't think i've got the stamina and i'm trying to learn from my mistakes so it'd be very foolish to do the same thing again today might go check out the lewis shield wreck and have a dive there I'm just going to wing it to be honest, I have no idea what I'm doing here or what the ground's going to be like, so let's see how I go. Can't be much worse than yesterday. The headland's out so we don't have to walk, yay! <laughs> the headland we were tempted to walk to was actually out of the competition zone, so it was an easy choice to swim straight off the beach. Comp's about to start, I'm just going to swim off the beach, have fun, look in the shallows and go from there, see what I find. See you in six hours. Once again, I had never scouted this area before, but as soon as I saw this Japanese stringweed in the shallows, I knew that there would be fish there. As expected, I saw bass, but they were all too small. All I was seeing was small bass and small pollock. It was time to move on. I found some nice ground in eight to 10 meters and added my first fish to the stringer. I found some lovely gutters and it had a lot of bait hanging around it. I knew there'd be something sooner or later. After a while I was starting to get a few fish. 
There's a golden rule in competition diving. Don't leave fish to find fish. I was seeing mullet fairly regularly, so I stuck around in the area and managed to put a few more on the stringer. It's been a very scratchy morning. I've got two hours and 20 minutes left to go. Picked up four nice mullet. I haven't been able to capitalize on a bass. I've seen some that are just, they're just too small. And yeah, really hoping I can get one of those. Keep cracking on. I've got a Pollock and I've got a Rass that may go. See what happens when we get back to the weigh-in. Two and a half hours to go. Just gotta keep scratching. I kept diving around the same area but varying the depths a few meters and I was still finding fish. I needed a few more of these though. In and amongst it all, I managed to pick up a bass, so I had six mullet, two pollock, and one wrasse to weigh in. Well, that's it, run right out of time. Better swim back here before, I really run out of time. <coughs> Gotta make it back to that weigh in before four o'clock. It's 3.30 now, I think I'll just make it. Ended up with another two mullet just then in the last Last half hour, which is good, just goes to show, you can't give up. Just keep fishing, keep trucking. There's always something around the corner. Much better result today. Didn't do the walk this morning. Just swam and swam and swam. Shooting fish right in the last hour, so. Overall, a bit happier. Missed a rass earlier on in the day, but hopefully this one goes. Overall. I took my advice and I did better. Slightly better than yesterday, but uh, still pretty poor shooting. Target practice for me, I think. Nice doggy though. Yeah, that was the uh, one that turned the day for me because I was hitting nothing for about three hours and then I shot the doggy, so that changed it all. Good result made in the end. Yeah, not bad. Good size. Once again, Graham had an impressive catch, but it was Gary who top scored with 14 valid fish. Unfortunately, my RAS didn't make the minimum length by about 5mm, but it was still better than my performance yesterday. I finished 5th. Overall, I did much better on the second day, obviously because I spent more time fishing and less time running up a stupid Cornish cliff goat track thing, not even sure that I could get in. If you're going to take a big risk like that, you want to be really sure that it's going to pay off. You need to scout these things, which I obviously didn't do. That's why I wasted a lot of time, got really exhausted and missed a lot of fish on that day. There's one national competition left for the year and it's at a place I don't really like called Ringstead Bay. I've never done any good there. I think I've shot one bass there and a wrasse in a national before. It's not my favorite location, but that's where it is. So I'm going there next weekend. If you wanna see how this all plays out for the rest of the year, make sure you subscribe, like this video if you enjoyed learning a bit about my competition methodology and seeing some different parts of England. And I'll see you on the next one.